from the station working for you. This is Good Morning Indiana, streaming now. Acting. Plus, a local organization is serving meals to the community in record numbers. This morning, the major milestone they just surpassed. And the Butler Bulldogs are a little more than 24 hours from hitting the hardwood. Why a change by school officials means there will be even fewer fans watching the season opener. It is 4.30 here on our Tuesday morning. I want to thank you for joining our team on Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey. Todd Clausen is standing by this morning with an active radar behind you. Todd, what can people expect as they head out on the roads? Yeah, you know, they're going to be wet in many locations here, Lauren. The good news is for the most part, this is just the light rain that's making its way through uh, the area. So your windshield wipers will definitely have to be on, but not expecting huge issues here across central Indiana. I'll give you a little bit of a closer look and you notice some light showers in and around the 465 loop. Some heavier showers up here in Carmel back into the Lebanon area as you work your way into Boone County. Then some light showers down to the south in a Greenwood. And as we slide up towards the north uh, west, you know, some pockets of moderate rainfall. And it's not out of the question within these pockets of some heavier rainfall. You could actually mix in a few snowflakes as you're seeing on radar here just south of Crawfordsville. If you do see some snowflakes, we are not talking about any accumulation. That is the good news. This is just going to be general plain old rain that will be making its way through the area, uh, at least here in Central Indiana. Now it's a different story if your travels take you up towards the Chicago or Northern uh, Illinois area here this morning. So this wave of rain will come uh, through over the course of the next couple hours. Today is not going to be a complete washout, uh, but it's definitely not going to be a very bright day for us uh, with lots of clouds that are going to stick around. Temperatures are in the 30s and 40s this morning, right at 40 in Indianapolis. 36 is the current temperature up in Peru. Most of the showers should be through by about 8, 9 o'clock. Until then, you'll need to have the umbrella hand and then here are the clouds that are around with the clouds in place. Temperatures really don't do a whole lot today as we'll stay in the 40s from start to finish. Lauren. All right, Todd, thank you so much. We did have a little bit of a crash clean up here at the North Split, but everything is clear right now, as you can see. Just be aware of some wet roads out there as you're traveling in and out of the downtown area. Of course, we're going to keep a close eye on any problems for your Tuesday morning commute, and of course, we'll keep you updated. This morning, plans for a large apartment complex here on Indiana Avenue in downtown Indy are on off the table, Indianapolis-based Buckingham companies plan to build a large apartment building and retail space between the Indianapolis Urban League office and the Madam Walker Legacy Center. The plan was met with much criticism, mostly through online petitioning from the group Reclaim Indiana Avenue. The group says they are not against Indiana Avenue development, but they want to whatever is built to reflect the street's rich black history. We want when people come through here on the cultural trail or to visit Indiana Avenue for them to feel the spirit of the black community here. It's working well in cities like D.C., Atlanta, Charlotte, Dallas, and Houston, and we feel like Indianapolis deserves to have that as well. A statement to WRTV, a spokesperson for Buckingham Company, cited the pandemic as the reason for the change in plans for Indiana Avenue, saying in part, quote, despite the best intentions of everyone involved, the pursuit of a feasible project was undermined by the impact of a once in a hundred years pandemic and took away the reasonable opportunity to complete this development at this time. We appreciate the efforts and leadership of the Madam Walker Legacy Center and the other stakeholders with the interest in this incredibly important site, end quote. At 4.33 this morning, a northern Indiana school is the center of an ACLU lawsuit. A student at Manchester Junior Senior High School is suing the school after he was told he couldn't wear a t-shirt. The shirt read, quote, I hope I don't get killed for being black today. And quote, the ACLU lawsuit says a student's First Amendment rights are being violated. The student was sent home after refusing to change the shirt. According to the ACLU, the student's shirt did not violate the school's student handbook. You can read more on this story by downloading the WRTV News app. This morning, scammers are stealing Hoosier identities to claim unemployment benefits, and you may not even be aware that it's happening. The Indiana Attorney General's office says since January, they've seen an exponential increase in the number of this kinds of fraud. They say oftentimes payments are already deposited into the scammer's account by the time you learn of the fraud. State says scammers are targeting the identities of people they know are busy working during the pandemic, like health care workers. If you think you may, your info may have been stolen like this, contact the Attorney General's office.
It is 434 and we want to take a turn to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic and its impact on our state. This morning, state health officials report 5,600 new coronavirus cases. It's the first time in nearly a week we've dropped to less than 6,000 new cases in a single day. Health officials also say 27 more Hoosiers have died with the virus. That's also the lowest single day report in a week. Since the pandemic began, nearly 5,100 Hoosiers have died with the virus. State leaders also updated the state school dashboard on Monday. Over the past week, Indiana's schools have reported more than 2,200 new student cases and nearly 1,100 new teacher and staff cases. As of this morning, nearly 400 Indiana schools are still not reporting their coronavirus cases to the state's health department. WRTV working for you and going inside the COVID crisis in Indiana. Tonight, you'll hear from a 30-year-old man who survived a harrowing battle with the coronavirus. Don't forget to set your DVR for the WRTV news special inside the COVID crisis tonight at 7 o'clock. This morning, there's concern about the double whammy of the flu and COVID-19. Later today, the American, Marion County Health Department is holding a special flu shot clinic for high-reach older individuals. The drive-up clinic is this afternoon from noon to 4 at the Health Department's community building that's at 4012 North Rural Street. The no-cost clinic is designed for people with chronic medical conditions and those over the age of 65 who may not want to go out in public to get a flu shot during this pandemic. You will stay in your car to get this vaccine. Well, this continues to be a tough time for people. The holidays will undoubtedly make it even more difficult if you can't connect with your family like you normally would. So we're working for you with some resources to keep in mind if you need them. Dialing 211 connects you with resources in your community. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline can be there if you need to talk to someone, even if it's anonymously. That's the same for the crisis text line. And WRTV.com slash Rebound Indiana was specifically designed to help you manage increased pressures from the pandemic. It is 436. An organization dedicated to feeding Hoosiers has reached a major milestone months ahead of schedule. Second Helpings just provided its 15 millionth meal to the community. The nonprofit has been providing meals to local families for more than 20 years. The organization often distributes through the community centers like this one in Fletcher Place. Leaders say the need leveled off for a little bit over the summer, but it is climbing again and there's no sign of a slowdown. Many of those folks have never had to need, needed help, never had to go to a food pantry, never had to ask for assistance. And yet they have to look at their kids each day and make sure those kids are fed. Well, Second Helpings is on track to serve 1 million meals this year alone. It's 437 when the Butler Bulldogs open their season tomorrow. There will be less fans filing into Hinkle Fieldhouse than originally expected. On Monday, school leaders announced 1,500 fans will be able to watch the Bulldogs play in person. The new number is down from 2,200 fans previously announced. According to the university, the change was voluntary. If you're lucky enough to get inside the historic Hinkle Fieldhouse, you are required to wear a mask and your temperature will be taken. At 438, another IndyCar fan favorite will be getting back on the track for part of the 2021 season. Longtime WRTV driver analyst Tony Kanan announced on Monday he's joining Chip Ganassi Racing. Kanan will be driving the number 48 car in the four oval events on the schedule, including the Indy 500. Seven-time NASCAR champ Jimmy Johnson will be in number 48 on the street and road courses. 2020 was supposed to be TK's farewell tour, but the chance to come back with the Ganassi team came at the right time. Time. Kanan drove for C CGR from 2014 to 2017. As a race car driver, you want to race for the best team, for the winning team. Um, they have proven on and off that, you know, they are one of the top teams to beat. And then as a race car driver, being selfish, that's where you want to be. It doesn't matter who you talk to. You want to be in a winning team in a big organization that has a lot of resources and, and so on. So. It's not a hard decision, you know what I mean? I, I think it's, you're asking a kid if he wants to go for an ice cream. Well, the deal is for the 2021-2022 seasons. Along with Indy, TK will race in Texas and Gateway Motorsports Park near St. Louis. This morning, the race for a coronavirus vaccine is taking a giant leap forward. New information signaling a potential FDA approval just after the break. Todd? And we're dealing with some light rain here this morning across central Indiana. You'll definitely need the windshield wipers going on the, in the car as you take to the roadways if you're doing so in the next few hours. But the day's definitely not a complete washout. We'll break down your Tuesday and look ahead to your Thanksgiving as well coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues right here on WRTV.
At 442, welcome back this morning. A top Democrat on the Senate Judiciary Committee is saying that she's stepping down. Senator Dianne Feinstein from California made the announcement on Monday. It comes after Feinstein announced or received criticism rather over her handling of the hearings for Supreme Court Justice Amy Coney Barrett. Liberal activists did not approve of her praise of Chairman Lindsey Graham during those hearings. However, Feinstein says that she will remain on the Judiciary Committee as a senior Democrat. New this morning, it looks like the FDA is getting closer to approving two COVID-19 vaccines. The agency has asked members of its Vaccine Advisory Committee to reserve December 17th and 18th for meetings. A source says those meetings are to discuss a vaccine developed by Moderna. Another meeting already on the books for December 10th will focus on Pfizer's application for emergency use for its vaccine. Moderna and Pfizer both claim their vaccine candidates are 95% effective. The FDA consults with its vaccines and related biological products advisory committee committee before allowing any vaccine to go to market. At 4.43, there are some new concerns this morning as the coronavirus pandemic threatens to spiral out of control. As ABC's Kenneth Moten reports, among the more concerning developments are more states running out of hospital beds. This morning, the mayor of Los Angeles is urging people to stay home for Thanksgiving as he announces possible fines for travelers. Anyone 16 or older arriving at Los Angeles airports or train stations must fill out this form, saying they understand California's travel advisory. The top reads, failure to submit the form is punishable by a fine of up to $500. Please, let us not make this Thanksgiving the deadliest day of this pandemic. The U.S. is now on track to see 200,000 daily coronavirus infections, right now averaging 167,000 new cases per day. And for the 14th consecutive day, the country has set a record for the number of people in the hospital with COVID, nearly 86,000 on Monday. Pennsylvania says all ICU beds in the state could be full by next week. Doctors in Montana and Idaho also running short on beds. People in those environments still don't believe that this is a problem. They say it's maybe fake news or it's just over exaggeration or it's some sort of a conspiracy. The data don't lie. North Carolina's governor is expanding mask requirements and pleading with people not to travel. Our actions now will determine the fate of many. But at airports across the country, more than 3 million people were screened at TSA checkpoints in recent days, flying despite the CDC warning against it. At testing sites, people are waiting in line for up to five hours. Doctors warn a negative test does not mean you're in the clear. It's not um, a guarantee that being negative right now means you'll be negative on Thanksgiving. Meantime, AstraZeneca, the third drug maker to announce its COVID vaccine, is up to 90% effective. And now Qantas will be the first airline to require a vaccination. The airline says once vaccines are widely available, it will mandate international travelers prove they've received a vaccine before flying. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. And it is 445. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has raised its COVID-19 warning on cruise ships to the highest level, saying all people should avoid going on cruises. The agency says that the warning includes river cruises and it applies worldwide. The guidance comes after the CDC lifted its months-long ban on cruise ships operating in and out of U.S. ports at the end of last month. The new guidance says that cruise passengers should get tested three to five days after their trip. And even if they test negative, once they return home, they should quarantine for for seven days. Let's get a check of our forecast this morning with Todd Klaus. And Todd, a little drizzly here downtown anyways. Yeah, there's some light rain definitely moving through parts of the area this morning. And unlike what you'll see in the forecast for tomorrow, we only deal with the rain for a couple hours this morning. That is the good news. A live look outside here. Here's the bridge over White River and White River State Park. And you're looking at the lights on there. Uh, the zoo, obviously a little bit of a glisten there with the ground uh, being wet. It'd be a little more pretty, I think, if there was some snow out there. Not everybody probably feel the same. Same way, uh, but with the Christmas lights, uh, you could use a little snow at some point. That's not in the forecast here, though, today uh, or in our near future. That is the good news. 40 degrees with these rain showers moving through this morning. Uh, just a light wind out of the southeast at 8 miles per hour, and everybody has temperatures in the 30s and 40s, but everybody is above freezing. That's the good news as we go forward in this forecast for the day today. Even though there's some rain, you don't really have to worry about it freezing uh, out there on the roadways. 40 in uh, Crawfordsville right now, or 39 down.
down to 40 in Greencastle, 41 in Bloomington, a little cooler here to the top. We may have to keep an eye on those temperatures up in the Peru area at 36 as they inch a little bit closer to freezing, uh, but I'm not expecting the temperatures to drop a whole lot here uh, throughout the course of the morning. Here's a live look at WRTV Storm Team radar, and you can see these showers uh, moving through. We have some light rain here through the metro area back into Hendricks County and Brownsburg down towards Franklin and Shelbyville. A little bit of a heavier pocket of rain from Carmel there uh, just north to Lebanon, and then there's a few heavier pockets here off to the west near Greencastle, Vetersburg, and within some of these heavier pockets, it's not out of the question that a few snowflakes can mix in, uh, so don't be shocked if you see uh, that as you look out your window, but we're not going to be worrying about any uh, major issues as far as any snow goes. It'll just be a few flakes, and that's just about it. And then some light showers here from Delphi to Monticello over into the Lafayette area. This is a wave of rain that's moving through this morning, the center of low pressure further off to our northwest, and this is going to continue to head in that northwesterly direction throughout the course of the morning hours. Uh, by about 9, 10 o'clock, we're done with the rain here in Terre Haute, Bloomington, as well as Seymour, northern locations. You may hang on to the rain just a little bit longer throughout the course of the morning hours, but by the time we get to 12 noon, the rain should be to our north from that point forward throughout the remainder of the day. We're looking at just cloudy skies all across the area. As far as temperatures, really don't do a whole lot here today because of the cloud cover and the showers this morning, but from 9 a.m. through 5 p.m., just mostly cloudy skies and your high temperatures will only be right around 48 degrees. Now this evening, sunsets at 523. Skies will be cloudy, but it's dry throughout the evening hours with temperatures that will be in the 40s. And as we look ahead to tomorrow, it's a warmer day, but it's also going to be a pretty wet day for us. Wednesday is going to feature uh, quite a bit in the way of showers and even, as you see here, a few thunderstorms. Don't be shocked if you hear a few rumbles of thunder. So let me go back over to TrueCast for you. Here we are at 1130 uh, tonight. It's still dry across the area, but this rain will come in during the overnight hours with some pockets of heavier rainfall while you're sleeping. And this is when you could hear a rumble of thunder. Uh, this is 5 a.m. as you see uh, on our time scale there. And this rain will continue to move through in waves tomorrow. And it may get a few breaks in the afternoon, but overall it's a pretty wet day. And some areas could see about a half an inch uh, to an inch of rain before we start to wrap things up here as we work our way into Wednesday night. So if you are doing a little bit of driving for Thanksgiving here, uh, just know that Wednesday, the big getaway day, or what typically would be the big getaway day, uh, there's going to definitely be some rain all across uh, the area. And again, rainfall totals could be up uh, near one inch. Thanksgiving Day itself looks to be dry with uh, temperatures in the mid 50s, mostly cloudy skies. Friday and Saturday are above normal with temperatures in the mid 50s and look pretty nice. And then as we get into Sunday and Monday, that's when cooler temperatures come in. And by Monday, we could be talking about a few rain and or snow showers, Lauren, across the area. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a look right now at your commute on this Tuesday morning. Here's a live look up in Hamilton County. I-69 here and State Road 37. You can see here on the interstate, traffic looks to be traveling up to speed, both northbound and southbound. No major issues to slow you down. And taking a look around central Indiana, everything looks to be traveling up to speed. Here's one more look right now from I-65. This is up at State Road 39 in Lebanon area where things are traveling smoothly as well. Still pretty quiet out there this morning. We'll let you know if there are any trouble spots to avoid. Here at 451, shoppers are worried about shopping on Black Friday and the rest of the holiday season. A survey by the accounting firm Deloitte shows that 57% of people are nervous about going into stores due to the pandemic. 61% plan to do their Black Friday shopping online this year compared to 54% who plan to go in stores. Three quarters of those surveyed will stay out of stores completely this week to avoid large crowds. Many retailers planned for fewer shoppers and started their Black Friday deals earlier this month. A local nurse is getting a surprise fit for a hero. Just after the break, one shop showing this woman that her life-saving work is not being forgotten. We'll see you on the other side of the break. Welcome back. A Hoosier Healthcare hero got a sweet surprise at the beginning of her shift at Ascension St. Vincent Hospital. We were there as local bridal shop Marie Gabriel Couture presented to Koa Knight and nurse a gift of a beautiful designer wedding dress. I'm really surprised but very thankful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> uh, it's been kind of a roller coaster in the hospital, but definitely getting married on October 1st. 
Welcome. <laughs> what a beautiful dress. Yeah. <laughs> we do have a, a lot of our bride, our doctors and nurses and healthcare service people for years. We just, this is one way to say really thank you. All of us from Mary Gabriel just simply we want to say thank you. Last month, we told you about the contest to nominate a soon-to-be bride frontline worker. Marie Gabriel Couture was chosen by Pronovius, a wedding dress designer, to honor a COVID-19 frontline worker with a gown for her big day. Tacoa's future sister-in-law and her fiancé were also at the hospital Monday night for that surprise. Very exciting. So happy for her. She'll also be able to choose from five Pronovius dresses at Marie Gabriel Couture. The bridal shop will also provide all of the alterations for her, so she'll be all set to go for her wedding day. All of the brides who are nominated will also receive a special coupon as a thank you for all of the great work they're doing to help our community through this pandemic. Here at 456, let's get a check of our forecast right now and active radar with Todd Clausen. Yeah, rain moving through here across central Indiana this morning. So if you do take to the roadways or the kids have to head off to the bus stop if they're not on a break already or doing the virtual learning, uh, definitely have the rain gear handy. We'll be dealing with these showers for the next couple hours, uh, but the whole day is not a washout. Once we get past this after or this morning rather into the afternoon hours, we will start to bring in more in the way of sunshine all across uh, the area. And then once we get to tomorrow, though, it's another pretty wet day for us. As you see in your seven-day planning forecast, Thanksgiving looks dry. We'll break it all down for you coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues right here at 5 o'clock.